But Jim, uh, one last thing on all this, and we got to finish with the CM Punk stuff already, but when so many people email this in, we got to talk about it. Did you see CM Punk going after Brian Alvarez on Instagram? No, I'm I'm not uh, gramming on the Instas here. I've got so many other things to look at, so I'm completely in the dark about this. I had no knowledge this was coming. I don't know what was said to trigger this, to be fair, but CM Punk on Instagram, look, everyone, Brian Alvarez doesn't like it when misinformed internet trolls make up rumors about him, so please stop making up rumors and stories for clicks while Brian makes up rumors and stories for clicks. Okay? <laughs> He's married, for God's sake. By God, that man has a family. And then in parentheses, Brian Alvarez, shut the fuck up and stop talking about me challenge day one. And then he posted... Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Stop talking. Was there punctuation in there you glossed over? Uh, no, it is the stop... It's the Brian Alvarez shut the fuck up and stop talking about me challenge day one. Okay, I thought you were saying he was saying Brian Alvarez shut the fuck you know up. And I thought that's what he was saying at first too. All right. Well, anyway, it's a challenge and will he make it to day two? But now what instigated well, this from Brian Alvarez's chicken lips? I don't know, but then there's a couple other uh, messages here that Punk tweeted out. This one's... All sorts of fascinating. I'm loving this. This one, apparently, year, I don't know who this is to, but Brian Alvarez emailed someone to get a message to Punk, and Punk just put the email up, but it doesn't say who it went to. I feel stupid for even bothering to write this, but David Bixenspan is in one of his moods, and I've been reading the stupidest shit the last three days. If you ever talk to Punk about this, and I doubt you will, and I doubt even more that he'd give a fuck, please let him know that I do not, nor have I ever had any problem with him. It has been, and this is in caps, four years! <laughs> and Bix still believes that I hold a grudge against CM Punk because he was dating Maria. The best part is, that wait, I, wait, hold up, back up, <laughs> back up, before we go any further, Maria, Canellis? Yeah. Well, why would, why would Brian Alvarez have a fucking problem to begin with, with punk dating Maria Canellis? That's his sister. What? No, I'm fucking with you. I have I, I was meant to say, no, no. Maria Canellis is a foot and a half taller than Brian Alvarez. She'd take him like a pill. They can't possibly be physically related. I think, I mean, I, I actually, I don't know. I mean, maybe he made some compliment. I don't know. I don't know. Again, it's, was, was, it, was, he, again, was, it's, was he, <laughs> was he one of those male fellas making goo goo eyes from afar at Maria? And got mad because Punk was dating her at one point in time? I'm not sure. And again, if the source for this was Yenta Bix and Span, you never know how crazy it ends up. From well, that's true. That's why it's a whole cast from. of uh, zoological characters here. But go ahead. The best part is that I'm writing this on my anniversary weekend with my wife. I can only imagine the shit that will be written in another four years. So yeah, hope things are going well for you. And let me know if you need anything. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, again, we don't know who this was to, but it was to get a message to Punk that... That he was happily on his honeymoon. That he's on his honeymoon. He, he doesn't care that Punk dated Maria years earlier because he had some undefined relationship, either physically or mentally, with Maria. No, no, hold on. I promise you. <laughs> I've, I've known Maria for quite a while, and I look at the two of them, and I think, no, there, there may have been a mental relationship on fucking Alvarez's part, but I, I don't think they've, unless in some way or another she's ever beaten him up at a wrestling match, there's not been any physicality. Well, I'll see what else we can find out about this, but Punk then put up another message. Friendly reminder, I haven't been on TV in nine months. And y'all still just can't stop talking about me. Maybe stop. You'll feel better. Love, hate, it's all the same. 
I don't enjoy being the sole person that props up the entire misinformed clickbait industry based on toxic gossip from lying sources. <laughs> but what can you do? When you're the king, it comes with the crown. Oh my God, what a cunning linguist. What a wordsmith. A man speaking in tongues there. Well, hold on, I'm trying to find because someone told me there's more to this story. Oh, good Lord. I don't even know what the story is. I don't know what the hell. I'm trying, what I'm trying to find out. What is going on here? What, what is happening? This? Like on Always Sunny. But they just, what is happening? You know, the punk AEW stuff is so easy to understand compared to the punk Brian Alvarez stuff. I have no idea what's happening here. Uh, I'm trying to find this. Apparently, Punk also put up an audio message. Apparently, this was the last thing Punk posted. There were also some images of Larry the dog, which would have satisfied you. Here's CM Punk on his Instagram. One more before I go really quick. Um, the parasocial relationship a lot of fringe wrestling fans have with certain people is really unhealthy um i get the tribalism like it's fun to root for your team but picking sides seems a little silly you don't know me you don't know anybody else um so you know just go touch grass well, obviously, CM Punk in the midst of a meltdown, just a rude, awful, mean guy. Just hysterical, screaming oh. at the top of his slobbering over there. Uh, see, but now we do know these people, so we can kind of take sides if we want. But I agree with him. People that don't know anybody shouldn't take the sides. They should listen to the people that do know the people and then take the sides. Real quick before we wrap up this segment, you brought up slobbering, and that's a good transition to bring up. We brought up that Yenta Bixen span was tied into this story. Apparently he went on Twitter and I have this because a bunch of people sent it to me. He's blocked just about everyone. He goes, <laughs> apparently he goes through people's list of like, if he wants to block you and they don't find out like who follows you and block them. And they don't even know who the fuck he is. I only know that because other people have told me it happens, but he got involved here in the story. Wait, you do realize that the email from Brian Alvarez, the some friend of CM Punk is from roughly 2009-2010, right? As Punk's other story posts show, he's posting it to Shade Brian. I think I knew about this at the time, but I don't remember who Brian sent the email to. What are these? Are these transcription notes of like him doing stream of consciousness therapy at his psychiatrist's office? Is this supposed to be understandable? Well, here's well, here's the real story because. Here's the real story. David Bixenspan, Yenta Bixenspan, hates Brian Alvarez because for a while, Brian Alvarez, for reasons that are inexplicable, because if you saw the way that Yenta Bixenspan behaved on Brian Alvarez's message board, you wouldn't say, hey, let me turn over my newsletter to you. <clears throat> but Brian Alvarez did that. And for a while, Yenta Bixenspan was, I don't even know what his exact title was, but he was the front page story writer for Brian Alvarez's newsletter. Brian Alvarez decided to move on. Yenta Bixenspan has yet to move on from it, and he hates Brian Alvarez. To go with that, from way back in the days where guys like CM Punk or whoever would go on the internet and interact with weird wrestling fans like he just talked about, Yenta Bixenspan was one of them. He knew Colt Cabana. He knew CM Punk. At a certain point, Punk stopped talking to Yenta Bixenspan and Cabana started paying Yent the Bixen Span. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, that's, and then all of a sudden he hated punk. There's a mirror image of personalities. One guy says, this is somebody I don't need to be fucking speaking to anymore. And the other guy says, let me hire him to work for me. That's the real dynamic here at play. But here's the next tweet. He's responding to Brian Alvarez, who, after all of this, just wrote, LOL, what? David Bixen Span, Yenta Bixen Span responded to that. The guy who you baselessly framed as a sexual predator in your what? newsletter what? a few months after you found out he was dating a woman, you had a, and then in parentheses with a question mark, worked crush on, is still mad at you about it 17 years later. You know, that thing you vociferously defended writing at the time. And then there's a 
article here, I guess from Brian Alvarez's newsletter in the highlighted portion, there is a belief that he's dangerous around the girls. What? And the term <laughs> used was girls, meaning that just because he might have hooked up with a particular girl means nothing or vice versa. Let me continue for a second, though, out of the highlighted. I don't know if that's the case or not, but that's the belief. And apparently this is a whole section about heat wait and a, punk. Wait, so wait a minute. So... <laughs> This is, this is so fucking funny. <laughs> Yenta, Yenta has been keeping a file on this fucking guy for almost 20 years because 20 years ago, Brian Alvarez had a crush on Maria Canellis and he was upset at CM Punk because CM Punk had the temerity to date more than one woman in his entire life. And now they're fighting about it when they're in their fucking 40s. Is this what I'm being led to believe I here? I guess, I mean, again, it's all so bizarre. And here's another one. Someone says Alvarez was crushing on Maria, and Yenta responds, it seemed like it was mostly a gimmick, but then shortly after she and Punk, and in parentheses, accidentally, went public as a couple, all of a sudden... Brian's newsletter was constantly full of weird, obviously planted anti-punk stories in, hmm. 2000, in 2009 or whatever. Is history repeating itself, but over a man crush instead of a woman crush? That's interesting. That's very interesting. These I, crushers, I'll tell you, you know, Crusher Lasowski never did this. Well, he didn't have Twitter. Let's be fair. Hey, can I say just a couple of things before we uh, wrap this up? One... We brought up slobbering at the top. I just want to say once again publicly here, because he denies it. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Yet the Bixen Span had drool go off his face, off his mouth, sprang forth, and drop onto my then girlfriend's hand as it was on the window of my car. I remember you telling me about this years ago. Oh, no, this happened. And again, if he wants to publicly say that it didn't happen, I will get her on the show. Because I actually, I had to pull it out of you there because I, you know, you mentioned in passing the time that he drooled on your girlfriend. I was like, wait a minute. Don't bury the lead here. Back yeah. up. And, and you, you reconstructed you how the, the drooling happened when he was leaning over into trying to get into your car and she was trying to recoil from his <laughs> presence and her hand was up in a defensive posture and he drooled on her. Well, what I wanted to say about the drooler, and I bring this up actually because recently it was brought to my attention, he went on the Wrestling Classics message board and said that it was a lie, which in effect is calling me a liar. So I went on there and I just made sure to let everyone know it happened. He knows he's a drooler. He knows why he drools. He knows he's a mess. He knows he had a Super Mario Brothers dirty t-shirt that he wore for years. He knows that he's a fucking human garbage pale kid. He knows all these things. So don't pretend you don't. Because if you're going to call me a liar, I'm going to hit you with the truth. And by the way, if you're going to pretend you're a wrestling journalist, disclose who's paying you and disclose who has paid you and disclose who you have sought for money or work. Because you're as compromised as anyone, you little fucking troll. And another thing, and this is how I'm going to wrap it up. You want to talk about files people got on someone, Jim. I've got a file on this fucking guy. Because you know what he does? He calls Stephen P. New, my lawyer, crying screaming and crying, text him crazy fucking things, including lies that are obvious, every time I defend myself against this little shit. But let me just say this. The next time you open your fucking mouth, you little garbage pail kid, I'm going to go and I'm going to fuck your shit up in a way that you're not prepared for. Go look through some of the crazy shit you have texted my lawyer, you idiot. You're an idiot. It's my privilege, not yours. You're an idiot. This little fucking guy who has threatened to end me and you, that was the exact word. I will end them. This little guy who starts shit online and then writes to my lawyer and says, someone who's friends with them was starting shit with me. We had nothing to do with that. He did that about Brian Solomon. Brian Solomon, Bixen Span picked a fight with him on Twitter Brian Solomon said, go fuck yourself. A respected author. 
Yeah. Like a grown adult with a, a profession. Yeah, and then he goes and writes to Stephen that someone in the circle of Brian and Jim is starting shit with me. They better not say anything about it. Hey, just so everybody knows, my circle was squared a while back. It's a very small one. Yeah, so, you know, that's the thing. The next time you open your fucking mouth, I've had, I have fucking messages because he fucking messages people, then send me the messages of him urging people not to do business with me, urging people not who I'm friends with not to be friends with me. So the next time, I'm not one of the various people looking to sue you. I'm just going to hand over my file right to the fucking police and let them handle you. You little fucking troll. The fuck? Diving in the middle of shit, calling me a liar. You drool-faced liar. Fuck. Folks, I've said it many times. You can say all those things, but don't throw the drool. Drool. He drooled Do not on her hand. Drool. I will put her on the show if he wants to call me a liar. Little troublemaking idiot. This guy has messaged people that... I've never had a single problem with about how they should disassociate with me because I've hurt his feelings by telling the truth about him. And then he pretends he's a fucking wrestling journalist. He's never held a job. He's never had a date or a companion or someone want to hold his fucking hand. Because <laughs> of the drool. It's all the drool. And this little fucking idiot goes out there and tries to fucking... Now, wait, tries to you cost, say little? No, 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 no I'm no, going to argue big, with you He's there. a big... He's literally... Do not say little. He's a fucking wildebeest. That's true. He's literally taken on the fucking shape of the chair that he sits in nonstop on fucking Twitter because that's the only social life he has. Is that why his pants look like my Aunt Lola's couch cover? Somewhat. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like he goes out there and causes all this shit. Every time he goes out in public... Someone takes a picture of him to send it to everyone else and say, look at this. And it's always about the wardrobe, too. Where did he get that smock that he's wearing? A smock. <sighs> but that's it. You don't have to call Steven crying because I'm telling the truth about you here. You don't have to go message people who either work for me. Are you talking about Stephen P. New of NewLawOffice.com, 888-692-8084, who as well as doing much legal work for you and I also has helped so many members of the cult of Cornette with their various problems with wrongful termination or damage from negligence of other people and various things, NewLawOffice.com. 888-692-8084. Are you talking about that guy? I'm talking about that guy. That little fucking idiot sending death threats to me and you, to our lawyer. That guy. Well, at least he's going through proper channels. If you're gonna, you can't just send a death threat to somebody's front porch. That's illegal. If you're gonna threaten to kill somebody, you've got to contact their attorney. Don't, like I said before, don't call up Stephen crying. Don't text Stephen. Your clients are doing something. Go get a fucking lawyer. And let the lawyer deal with the lawyer instead of my lawyer being your fucking counselor because you can't fucking cope with anything that you create, you little fucking idiot. He called Stephen. He woke Stephen up one morning screaming, your clients are ruining me. And Stephen didn't even know who it was. He said, who is this? He had no idea. Your clients are ruining me. You know why? You, let me tell you why that happened. You want to hear a funny story? Let's end with this. <laughs> I'm just muting myself. The your clients are ruining me thing happened when someone posted on Twitter that he had taken a government loan during the pandemic that was forgivable, so you wouldn't have to pay it back under the guise that he lost work in any way during the pandemic. Which again, did he lose work during the pandemic? Or did he stay the same during the pandemic? Or did he gain work during the pandemic? He took out a loan that looked very suspicious to me. It got tweeted out. I retweeted it. Then the story started going around. Who sent out the tweet? The first story I heard when I retweeted was Austin Aries. Because apparently Austin Aries was looking to sue Yenta Bixenspan. <laughs> then the next story I heard was Joey Ryan. Because Joey Ryan was looking to sue Yenta Bixenspan. Now I'm thinking... Man, there they, are plenty. They swim in the same cesspool circles. But it's just weird. I mean, so many people have called out Joey Ryan with just the gimmick and then after everything happened with his scandals. 
what did Yenta do? Did I be the one to single out? Then I heard it was David Lagana who wanted to sue Yenta Bixen's Spain. <laughs> now that one I believed, and that's when I took it down because he had tried to message me at one point, hey, I'm trying to put together a lawsuit against Bixen Span. Can we talk? <laughs> and I actually had Steven call him up and say, don't ever contact Brian Last again. Yenta Bixen Span may be a piece of shit, but he hasn't yet been accused of raping women in the night. And that was the last I heard of that. Or bad program editing. So my point is there are multiple people looking to sue this idiot at various points. I don't know what they would get. He's judgment proof. He doesn't have a dollar to his name. And he's oh, out you there. Can make, you can make plenty of judgments about him, but you're not going to get any money. Little idiot threatening us. That's what I have to say about that. Stephen P. New. <laughs> My face hurts now. Ah, folks, again, I'm, you know, I apologize for my inflammable colleague, the great Brian Last, who says these controversial things while I try to maintain an even keel and stay. Can you imagine? I'm here. I got a family. I got a house. I've got business. I've got businesses. I've got interests. I've got an adult big boy life. And I you have got this, a dry mouth. I've got this troll. Do I sound like I have a dry mouth? Well, no, you're compared to Bix. I got all this going on, and I have this troll with nothing and no life experiences, alone and miserable, in his own filth, living in squalor, who constantly is starting problems and blaming everyone else. So I want it to be known publicly. If you get a message from him about me, send it to me, because it'll go in our file. Because enough of this. He's not a journalist. He's barely a human being. Fuck. Threaten me. I have, I have bills and shit. This little motherfucker has nothing. It's easy to sit there and start trouble when you have nothing, your parents have nothing, you have no hope of ever having anything, and the only joy you get in life is sitting there and trying to fucking attack people. But I got the messages he sent people. Fucking coming and trying to cost me business and trying to cost me friendships because he can't take me telling the truth about him. Little but now thing. I have to disagree with you. You says he has nothing. He has the squalor and the filth. I don't even know if he has that Mario t-shirt anymore. So who knows how much filth he still has. Certainly he's wearing some type of moo-moo or <laughs> slip cover or <laughs> garment to cover <laughs> the expanse of him, one would think. It doesn't have to be the Mario t-shirt. If your clients say anything about me, I will end them. Jesus, what are you, fucking Batman? What the fuck is that? He's, he's Moxley. I, oh, shit. You know what? There you go. There you go. If there's any, anything working between Moxley and, and uh, mm. Yenta, then that's automatically something that we should distrust, yeah. I guess, because they've got ulterior motives. And by the way, years ago, he told me that he's known Tony Khan for years and he was hoping to get money out of Tony Khan for a website. So whenever you see anything he <laughs> writes about Tony Khan or AEW or you wonder why he ends up on the AEW press calls when he's not actually a fucking journalist, there may be your answer. <laughs> Let's move on now. And by, again, if you have any problem with what I said, go get a fucking lawyer and have your lawyer call my lawyer. Don't call my lawyer crying. You've never been in a courtroom. You don't know how anything fucking works on an adult level. Let's move on with the show, Jim. 